I feel like I'm in my ear. Calm down right now. Nothing's in your ear. You're panicking. Feel the thump. You see the thump right now? There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go. That's the thump, baby. That's the flounder, baby. That's the flounder, baby. It's a beautiful morning. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nail Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fish and Trips. We back for another vlog, y'all. Special one. I got a special episode for y'all today because I'm back somewhere that I have not been to in about two years. That's the Bulliver. The Bulliver Peninsula. Bulliver. I'm back in Bulliver, okay? It's been about two years since I've been in Bulliver. Um, I think the last time I've been here is when I was trying to come back to Galveston. The ferry took like two hours and it really pissed me off. So I've been boycotting Bulliver about two years. But I'm back. I'm back. And I'm back with one goal and one goal only today. Flounder. Flounder. F-L-O-E-N-D-E-R. Flounder. That's all I'm looking for. That's all I'm hunting for, man. I got about pint of shrimp. Got my cast net. See if I can get some mullet. A couple of rods. And I'm going to get it done. I'm just going to hunt butter for, for some flounder. It's been a while since I caught my last flounder. It's been a while since I posted my last fishing video, actually. But um, I'm going to do it for y'all today, man. I'm going to do it for y'all. Yeah, I think I can do it. <laughs> Enjoy the episode, y'all. Let go! We at the spot. It's all tranquil. Look like the tide is pretty damn high. Shout out to my truck over there. Hey man, let me show y'all a, a legend, a Galveston legend. They call him the box man. The box man, AKA young legend. Hold on, let me zoom in on him. Yeah man, so this guy, he has a, a boat. That's a box. He's been fishing Galveston for years. And he's a legend. He actually has his own Facebook page. He didn't make it, but the Facebook page is dedicated to him. When you spot him, it's called Spotting of the Box Man. They have a whole Houston Chronicle article about him. Dope. All right, let's talk about gear, baby. I'm going with my ultralight setup. And we're going to do some freeline shrimp. Just with a little jig head. That's it. I can't tell you if I honestly remember ever catching fish at this spot before. But, you know, it's the first time for everything. I'm charging in flounder, which means I need to be bouncing off the bottom, which means more than likely I'm gonna lose a lot of gear today because I believe there's a lot of oyster beds over here. Got our shrimp right there on that jig head. Using about 10 pound braid, 10 pound floral leader. That's it, nothing rocket science about that. So, The dude over here who's been fishing directly under the bridge, I don't know, he's been pulling up a little like sand trout. Something small, so I'm not really concerned about that. The water's flat, there's a slight current, it's outgoing, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> I mean, it's pushing outwards. Um, I see birds about 50 yards out, walking, walking on top of worship bed, so it's super shallow over here. So I just gotta find the channel in the pockets and get it done. It's one flounder, that's all I'm asking for today. The time is now 8 a.m. Left Houston at um, 5 a.m. Damn. Long journey for one damn fish, y'all. Let's get it done, though. You. Let's go try the other side, you can see it working. Right, we 
I'm gonna try the other side, y'all. <sighs> All right, let's try right outside the edge. Okay, that's super slippery right now. Current's ripping, so I'm just going right on the edge of that current. See the thing chilling over there. Dang, what the hell is that? Something just bit the head off my shrimp pretty severely. Get a little activity. Dolphins getting closer. He's using a cane pole and just, it's like a hand line wrapping around. That's old school right there. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go, y'all. Got one. <laughs> Got one. Got you, buddy. Okay, don't get on the rocks. Don't get on the rocks. Get on the boat, baby. Okay. First fish of the day. Croaker. All right, first fish of the day, y'all. It's a croaker. Decent size, man. I'm not soaking bait today. If I was, I would use this bad boy for cut bait. But let me tell y'all something. These fish are absolutely delish, okay? Delish. If you've never had a croaker before, um, feel free to test them out. Redfish candy. I do have my bigger pole. I ain't soaking bait, man. I'm gonna be on the move today. <laughs> Sorry, Kroger. Mm, don't want to use move cut bait. It's kind of he's looking at me. He's making eye contact. Okay, I'm gonna throw him back. He's making eye contact. With me. I feel bad now. Let's throw him back and see if we can get his cousin, the redfish. Yeet. How many you get? How many you catch? Oh, uh, come on. I know you got some. Bad Bad. The small croaker? Okay. That's the box, man. I can't believe I'm eating them. Yeah. You going to go try a different spot? Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice meeting you. Got box man coming. Live shrimp. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Live shrimp. What kind of bait were you using? It's cheap. Cut bait. Okay, cut bait. Mm. Interesting. You gonna try a different spot or you going home? Huh? You gonna try a different spot somewhere? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I write maybe a Okay. Look, 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 look. Where? Uh, Wupa. And, uh, and, uh, Kulik come in every day. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. He, he come in the church every day. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. He check flower, mm -hmm. red feet. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I have no clue what he's saying, but I'm laughing anyway because that's a legend. Respect the legend. Oh, I feel like I'm in my ear. Calm down right now. Nothing's in your ear. You're panicking. Feel the thump. You see the thump right now? There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go. That's a thump, baby. That's a flounder, baby. That's a flounder, baby. You know, that's a flounder right now. Yep. Target species. Target species, people. Target species, people. Target species, people. Come here. Come here. It's all good. It's all good. Wait a minute. Get a little closer. That's a target species, y'all. 
Just gotta get on the boat. Get on the boat. Get on the boat. Get on the boat, baby. Ah, oh, small one. Yeah, small. 15, 15 inches. Yes. We got the target species. We got the damn target species. I don't know if it's a keeper, but we're gonna see. Let's see. There we go. All right, y'all. So we got target species, which is flounder. A really upset flounder. Let's get him untangled. I want to meet Boxman, man. Like, what is your name, dude? I've been seeing you for years. There we go. All right, y'all. Target species. Say it again. Let's see. Get a measurement on it. Have to be 15. 15 inches to be a keeper. It's gonna be close. Here we go, y'all. Alright, here we go. We got it. Close your mouth, buddy. I ain't getting no ticket for you now. There we go. 16. 16. 16. 16. Good to go. Got a sandwich. <laughs> All right. Chatting up with the box man, y'all. 16 inch flounder. Put it in the cooler. Target species. I was built for this, y'all. You. All right, y'all. So I'm back at home, back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, the catch. Welcome to the second segment, the clean and cook. Now, listen, I'm going to be real with y'all. It's the next day, okay? I was exhausted, man. I slept for about 14 hours and I just woke up. Um, I wasn't gonna do this catch and cook. I wasn't, nah, I was gonna just do the catch part, but I decided that video was probably just too short, right? So for y'all, for my fish and trip family, I decided to add a second segment, which is the clean and cook, because I love y'all, okay? I hope y'all respect this, because I didn't, I didn't really want to do it. But I'm gonna do it for y'all anyway, so we're gonna keep it simple. It's a it's nice, simple, nothing fancy. Y'all know me, I'm fancy, but nothing. We're gonna do something this low key. We're gonna cook the flounder, a couple of sides, get it popping. Let's check it out. All right, y'all, here we go. This was on the menu, of course, to start of the show. This nice keeper flounder. Flounder season's about to end on November 1st through December 15th. Y'all be looking out for that, man. Um, so we just need one stick of butter, virgin olive oil, doing some sour cream and chives potatoes. Gonna do a little cornbread stuffing. Need some milk, a little slap your mama, and a little gravy. That's all we're doing, man. This is gonna be simple and sweet. Trust me, it's gonna be good. All right, y'all, so first things first, we need to cook our sour cream and potato chive. It takes about 30 minutes to cook, so we definitely want to get this out the way. So let's read the instructions on how to do so. Yeah, y'all thought, thought I'd know what I'm doing now. I read instructions like everybody else. First thing here is preheat oven to 400 degrees. Check open potatoes and sprinkle toppings, all right? If I never had this before, this is pretty bomb, to be honest with you. All right, so. We're opening up our potatoes. Spread these out. What's funny about these potatoes, they look dehydrated or something like that. You see that? I don't know, it almost like a, a potato chip. Mm, mm mm. Nope, nope, shouldn't have did that. Uh uh. Hold on. Mm, mm, no, mm, no, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, don't, don't, don't try that at home, please. Okay, so we spread out our potatoes. Got one more left here. Toss this to the side. Let's keep our kitchen clean. Next, we get our sauce here. And we just kind of sprinkle that over there. As so. Simple, right? Mmm, it already smells good. It smells like sour cream potato chips. Once again, do not try to eat the potatoes out the bag. Highly don't recommend. All right, perfect. All right, so what's next on the list? What we do next? Um, stir in two tablespoons of butter right here. A couple of tablespoons of butter. One and two. Next up, we need two third cups of milk, as so. Let's put that in there. Next is two and one fourth cups of 
boiling water. I wish I had my hand. Now give me a second. Okay. Excuse my microwave. So here is the two in one pork cups of boiling water. Let's get that nice and mixed. And so. Perfect. Next, just kind of stir your concoction. See that? Simple, y'all. We do simple recipes on Fish and Trip Channel, man. This ain't no gourmet restaurant. <laughs> All right. Um, I was like, why don't I understand what this is saying? I was reading the Spanish side. Give me a second, let me go back to the English side. Okay, so um, bake at 400, uncover it for about 35 minutes until potatoes um, are tender. Bet, all right, well, that's it for that. Got this nice, pretty mixture here. Okay, as you can see there. We'll just put this in the oven for 35 minutes. Believe it or not, it's gonna come out looking fire. I know, I know it's not looking good right now, but you gotta trust the process, y'all. Trust the process. All right, so let's get this in the oven, and we'll start working on filleting our fish. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and fillet our flounder. We should get four fillets out of this. Nothing too complicated. So what I'm gonna do? Take my first cut here, right? And we're gonna go towards the head tip of my knife there just kind of fill it out you know you're in a good spot when your knife goes through just work our way towards the head All right and the same thing opposite way I'm just kind of going along the gill lines honestly and I'm just trying to poke around towards the head now if you have a different way of flying flounder by all means do so so what I'm doing is almost creating like a triangle. Perfect. All right, so next what I'm gonna do is to simply go down the center of the flounder here, right? Turn around, and we're just gonna go right down the middle. So with the tip, I'm kind of just shanking the spine of the flounder all the way down to the tail. Now if this flounder was to just jump all of a sudden because of nerves, Y'all, I would literally die. All right, let's keep our board clean right now. Bet. All right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting our finger between here, right? And we're gonna just slowly start slicing along the rib cage. And my, my goal is underneath here, I'm just gonna be doing this until I get down to the edge here. That's the game plan, theoretically, okay? So one here, and I'm just gonna slowly go along the ribs. As so, take your time with it, baby. Ain't no rush. Do people get to eat when they eat? Yeah, y'all, so flounder season, I don't know, it seems like it's slower this year. I can't explain it, man. It's, fishing has been tough. Although the water has been beautiful and nice, fishing has been tough. I don't know. Can't explain it. The winds have been trash. Um, so hopefully it'll get better, man. And once I get better, of course, I bet flounder season is going to turn fire once it closes on November 1st. All right, y'all. So I'm just working my way along the rib cage. I am losing meat. But that's okay, though because it don't gotta be perfect, man. Cooking don't gotta be perfect, y'all. Life isn't perfect, right? Life, life isn't perfect. We have road bumps and stuff like that, so we just adjust, but we keep it moving. Just because things aren't perfect in life doesn't mean we quit. And just because my filet isn't perfect doesn't mean I quit either. Also, what I'm doing is coming up right above that fin and just kind of going slowly above it towards the tail. Like that, see that? All right, and I'm just continuing to kill this flounder with my fillet job. Okay, one second here. There we go. It's a little bone right here, there we go. And it's just like that, it's opening up. So just continue just to go along the rib cage. And 
slice right above that fin, like so. That's it. All right, we'll skin it. Get this out the way. Let's get this nice flounder juice out the way. Okay, get it together right now. All right, so next, take our knife, grab the skin, and slowly work our way along that skin and your cutting board. Just put my fingers in between, like that. And we'll continue. We'll trim it off a little bit better as I um, get towards the front. There we go. Skin is released. All right. Now you have some little bit of, um, this is like towards the fin. You can just easily just trim that off. Like that. Just trim that off. Boom. That's it, y'all. That is a deboned piece of flounder. Delicioso flounder. That's it. And honestly, you just repeat the process on the opposite side, right? So we have this side already open. So next, same thing. Just start working your way along that rib cage. Just with the tip of your fillet knife. like that wash your fingers by all means let me get a better angle because I'm trying to show y'all what to do but at the same time I ain't trying to lose my fingers to do so I would argue that flounder is probably the most popular fish to eat as far as here in the Gulf Coast inshore right mm, I can smell those potatoes and chives they already smell great all right, got that. This is a, I think it's a male, because a female will have roe. I don't know why I'm talking about roe, because I will never eat no damn flounder roe. I'm sorry, I, I'm not I'm not built like that, no. All right, so I'm just, I'm just getting my damn fillet. I'm tired, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't care right now. Okay, let's go. Y'all didn't see that. We'll put that back in there. Let's go back in there. There you go. Got to keep it family friendly. There we go. Put him to the side. Looking good, bud. All right, y'all. So once again, oh man, this, this side is horrible, but that's the beautiful thing about filet. We can always trim it and get what we want from it in a second. There you go, back. All right, let's get them, that rib cage out. Like that. Yeah, this flounder was about, I think it was what, 15 and a half to 16 inches, I can't remember. So the flays won't be super huge, but it's gonna be a meal. So that's what it's all about. All right, let's talk about the other side of the flounder. This side is done. All right, so even though it's a flat fish, it be packing some meat, you know, hitting meat. All right, y'all see this little line right here? There's a little line that you can follow and track to help fillet this flounder. So once again, I'm just gonna do a triangle on the head, cause that's what I do. All right, from here, we're gonna go right down the middle and follow that little line. Just follow the dotted line to eat your fish. Simple, right? There you go. Cut here again. And once again, go along that rib cage towards the front. You're just doing this, right? I'm gonna keep doing that so I get enough room so I can kind of put my thumb in here and pick it up slightly. There we go. tell you I'm tired I'm tired so excuse me if I have low energy as I'm trying to fillet this flounder and not lose my fingers I wonder like how long it's gonna be before they 
lift that sanction to close flounder season for like that, you know, what is it, 45 days? Like, I would love to just have an interview with a Texas Park and Wildlife person or whoever regulates this to say, how do you determine if it's time to, you know, lift that san sanction? All right, y'all, I'm, I'm murdering this fish for a second time, as you can see. Let me go ahead and get this lay off. All right, give me a second. There you go. I know people who cook flounder and flay flounder all the time are yelling at the screen right now. It's all good though. We still got our filet. See that? Bam. All right, let's go ahead and get the bio out the way. All right, one more filet to go. Hold on, let me get the skin off of this one. Let's go down. Yeah, I wonder like, how do they count the numbers of flounder and the population to understand like, yo, we need to shut down the season. Because this is, I think what, the second year they've done this? Before, for years, they ain't never done this. So I don't know. It's been hard to catch them this season so far. So maybe that's the reason. A little, see a little filet right there. It's gonna be good with our size, don't worry. So yeah, at what point do they bring it back? That's what I wanna know. All right, y'all, we got one more filet. Clean my board up, I don't like a dirty board. It's not visually appealing for my YouTube audience. And the regulations, I wanna say years ago, not even that long ago, it was like, what? Wasn't like Keeper was, you can keep like five of them or something like that. But sure enough, when you have a high bag limit and a lot of fish being caught, eventually population goes down. So I guess they gotta have them, or give them time to recover. I don't know. Speckled trout, like what's the limit for speckled trout right now? I remember back in the day, speckled trout limit was like 15, or something like that, 10 or 15. I never caught that many, so I never really worried about bag limit. I don't really like eating speckled trout that much, to be honest with you. So I, I ain't really worried about bag limit. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Come on right now, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Focus, focus. Be a professional, be a professional. All right, y'all, so um, <laughs> we're almost done. All right, so there is my, my flounder. Okay, it's not pretty by any means. It's not pretty. I know it's not pretty, but we got our fillets. Bad. We got the fillets that we needed. The skin is bad boy. And we're almost at the halfway point of this catch and cook. Almost at the halfway point of this catch and cook, baby. I bet. That's it, y'all. Four fillets, just like that. How long does it take? How long is my time right? 12 minutes, not bad, because I've been talking to. So we got four fillets from the flounder. Gonna give these a little bit of rinse. It's gonna saute, sorry. We're gonna saute these in the pan with some butter and virgin olive oil. And it's gonna taste delicious with our chives and stuffing. Our stuffing is what we're gonna cook last. It only takes about five minutes to cook that. So let's go ahead and rinse these off. Get our pan ready for this, um, our stuffing. And I think we have about 18 more minutes until our chives are ready, so we're making good time. I want everything to kind of be ready at the same time. I like eating hot food, right? <sighs> I need to have a Red Bull or something. Red Bull, can you sponsor me? No, nah, no, nah, that's, that's not good for your body. What other thing can I take? Like meth speed? Nah, nah, meth speed, that's, that's not good for your body either. Anyway, man, let me get situated, clean these flounder off, and I'll check back with y'all in a second. You. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's cook our fish. Now I have my pan about just under medium high. So what I'm gonna do is a little virgin olive oil. This is gonna help prevent the butter from burning. Burnt butter is not a good thing. If your butter is turning super brown, your temperature is too high. So this will kind of help prevent that. All right. All right. I know what I'm thinking. Damn, right now that's a lot of butter. Yeah, you're right. It is a lot of butter. But you know what? YOLO. I'm be honest with you. The reason I'm using this much butter is I don't feel like cutting it. But we'll just save some of this to base it later. 
There's our butter. Alright, so let's go ahead and put our flounder in. I'm gonna do about three minutes on each side. So it's 11 16. Alright. Get a little bit of the slap yo mama. I never tried this seasoning, but it's amazing actually. I'm looking at it cooked. I might do two minutes on this side. Don't be scared to put season on the food, people. And it'll hurt you. There we go. That looks good. That looks good. I so definitely don't want to overcook your fish. We do two minutes on this side. In the meantime, the stove top cornbread stuffing is really good. All you have to do is one and a half cups of water and two tablespoons of butter to bring to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, and once you bring it to a boil, throw that in there, put the top on, and let it sit for five minutes, dusty. So let's go ahead and turn on our stove to boil our mixture for our stuffing. We've got a multitask in the pit shop. You've got to be on it, be on it. All right. So yeah, two tablespoons of butter is good. We'll, we'll sacrifice these butter for our dead homies. So, uh, Alright, we're cooking. 17. Take a little look at it. Now the back fillets, I'm going to go ahead and flip now because those are smaller. Oh, there we go. So the back fillets on the back side of the flounder, we'll put those after one minute. The bigger ones, I'm going to flip after two minutes. Give me a second, man. This is a working kitchen. Okay. Looking good. Do a little bit more seasoning on the opposite side. Now you can season your fish before you put it into the pan, but if you turn like I am, you just do it. Throw it straight in the pan. I don't care. Just flip this over. There we go. It's been about two minutes, so we're flipping a bigger flavor over now. Come on, man. My flavors are falling apart because I'm just flipping like I'm crazy. Season on the back side. We're almost done. 18. Got our stuff and mixture over here. Want to bring that to a nice boil. It's almost there. Mm. Smells good. This is a lot of work, man. You know what I want to see now? I would love to see this younger generation cook more. Yeah, you know, I don't have to. But I, I just noticed that the kids are being familiar with us, you know, people have to have to. They don't cook. You know what I'm saying? The only thing they cook is recipes that feel on TikTok that last a 30 second video. If they can't even cook on TikTok, then they don't want to cook. You know what I mean? Get the kids in the kitchen, bro. They gotta know. Other things besides bread plate and DoorDash. All right, let's get our smaller one out. There we go. All right, the lady got on my hand. Smaller one out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's definitely good. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Fire. All right, that's all the stuff. Fire. Oh yeah, you have, you are going to teach your kids how to cook. You might want to invest in a fire extinguisher. Alright, my flavor's falling apart. Okay, it's been two minutes on the side. Let's take them out. Let's take them out. Oh my god. There we go. Oh my god, it's falling apart. I don't care. I don't care. I'm eating it anyway. I'm gonna eat it anyway. Oh yeah, look at that. That's gonna be kinda hard to get a good money shot. Alright, so let's get this out the way before I burn down the kitchen. 
All right. So next we have our stuffing mix. Remember, this is about a one four cup of water and one and a half cups of water, two tablespoons of margin. All you got to do after it boils, throw that in there. Add so. Again, this is a working kitchen. Mix it. Just like that, y'all. And I got her off the heat. There's no heat. Once you mix it, throw the top on. Five minute timer. That'll be done. We're still waiting for our potatoes, which has about three minutes left. So three more minutes left to the potatoes. Fish is done. Stuff will be done in five minutes. We're gonna have to get a money shot. My fish fell apart completely. I'm, I'm tired. I wasn't making enough effort to flip it properly. I don't, I don't care. I'm gonna get a good money shot. I'm gonna get a good money shot. We're gonna do a taste test. We're gonna eat it. It's gonna be delicious. I already know. Then we're gonna take a nap. See y'all in a little bit. Money shot next. You. Time for my favorite part of the episode, the taste test. This is what's on right here. Mm. Yup. Just like I remember. Delicious every time. Mm. This is some of this cornbread stuffing. Mm. It reminds me of Thanksgiving and childhood memories of turkey. Delicioso. Mm. All right, hold on. Let's try the scallop. Let's try the scallop, huh? Mmm. Yeah. Mmm, hold on. One second. Mmm. Good job right now, baby. I know it was a long day yesterday, but you did it. You pulled through. You pulled through. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below. Comment below if I should do another catch and cook. Because every time I swear I'm not going to do another catch and cook, the catch and cook videos blow up. I don't know why y'all like them, but should I keep doing them? Yes or no? Comment yes or no, should I keep doing catch and cooks? Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. You get to see more fishing adventures and crabbing adventures and adventures in general, right? Like anything that has adventures in it, I'm down for it, all right? Once again, my name is Ray Roy, a.k.a. Fishing Trips. It's been real, y'all. Peace.